Nama Buddhaya, Namaste. News flash or news update. No such thing really as a news flash in monastic life. But a little bit of news with the full moon of January coming up. I will be going as usual to Bangalore for my every 15 day meeting of the bhikkhus for the recitation of the Patimoka, the 227 monastic rules. But rather than returning that same day on the night bus back to here, this South Indian coastal location, I'm going to be going to the airport and going to Thailand on Tudong. What is Tudong? Tudong comes from the word Dutanga. It's the Thai word that comes from the Pali word Dutanga, which are the practices of the more ascetic monks, say forest dwelling monks. The Buddha allowed 13 Dutanga practices, one of which includes living outside or under trees, in caves, in huts, and if you've been watching these videos, you'll see that's how I live. It is a wandering monk. Charaka means walking in the Pali word. Charaka monk or Dutanga monk. In Thailand, you are a Tudong monk or a monk on Tudong. So although I'm going to Thailand on Tudong, it's not too different in fact, because I'm always on Tudong. As you've seen, I don't have a fixed abode or anywhere to live. I don't live in my monastery in Bangalore. I choose to live here in this forest on the mountain or in this coconut gro grove in a little hut room kuti. This is my preference for solitude. It does not mean you cannot find solitude, chita waveka, so refuge of your, your chita, your heart mind, within, even in a busy community, one can find this solitude. But for the practice of meditation and for the practice of discipline, some monks prefer to live in solitude. It is a little bit more difficult. One has to be very mindful about everything because you are really very solely reliable on lay people for your support and nature for everything else. I will be going to Thailand and employing the same practice, but it's going to be a little bit easier. It is a Buddhist country where monks are very well supported. So it shouldn't be difficult for me to go on arms around in the morning to collect food. It shouldn't be difficult for me to find suitable places to sleep. And there are many, many monasteries in the cities and in the towns where also hopefully I can take refuge as far as accommodation is concerned if necessary. So it's no big news, it's no big adventure. The reason is after 180 days since returning to India after going to the UK to get my new visa, it is time. We have this 180 day rule, six months, you must leave and return. You may have heard the expression visa run. I don't really like that, it sounds a little criminal, <laughs> but it's not. It's a case of leaving the country and returning. Now, I think the days of literally going to a border, crossing and returning within hours are gone. Immigration are a little bit more, uh, let's say, discerning about this now. And I think it's quite important one doesn't make a mockery of a system. So to be kind to ourselves and to be kind to the authorities, I have rather left it to the last minute, admittedly, but I won't return immediately. I'll spend some time enjoying Thailand. But don't worry, you're coming with me. And I'm hopefully going to be able to make some interesting videos. It's all Dharma, traveling especially, because we encounter so many obstacles to our practices along the way from busy trains, airports, aeroplanes being, flights being cancelled, flights being delayed, missing buses. The things that can occur whilst travelling are very important parts of everyday worldly life. And you can be a part of that and see and watch how I experience worldly life 
as a monk, keeping to my rules, which will be freshly recited on the full moon, those 227 rules, those five precepts, eight precepts mainly, being the ones that come into mind, whilst wandering in another foreign land, meeting new people and hopefully with their support, staying for a while to visit some monasteries, go back to my old monastery where I first stayed and trained and enjoy the practice as much as I can in a different environment. Exactly when I'm going to return to here, India, I'm not sure. We're not sure about anything. So to that end, I don't book a return ticket. I will see what happens. Maybe I'll need to come back quickly. Maybe I'll need to stay a little longer. In any case, I have a 45 day window of no visa necessary for India, uh, for Thailand. So maybe I'll make the most of that and enjoy the time there before coming back to India for the beginning of what will be the coming hot season here. This is the cold season and it's quite warm already. So we will see. What is the importance of this practice? Well, the importance of this practice is to live simply, getting back to simplicity. Now, it doesn't mean as lay people who have more complicated lives that uh, you are at a disadvantage. In fact, you are, at a, you are at an advantage in that you can always be comfortable and select your times for meditation. It's just those five hindrances that get in the way, as they do with us monks and as they do with ordinary people pr practicing ordinary daily activities. So often you may be working at a project and be distracted by something you want to watch on TV or you feel uncomfortable and you feel you need to get up and stretch your legs or you feel tired to go to sleep or you just feel restless and want to go for a run or go to the gym or speak to somebody on the phone or you may think why am I even doing this job? Those are those five hindrances coming into an ordinary job of work. So you see, they're there all around us. So the point of our Tudong practices is to really experience them in the raw. So when I step off that plane, I have a general idea of the direction I need to go in, and I'm reliant on people, lay people. Of course, in Thailand, they're all Buddhists, whether practicing or not. They're kind of born Buddhists there. It's the law, um, but they will understand what I am and be able to hopefully offer some assistance, even if it's a smile and a kind word. That goes a very long way, further than anything else, in fact. So I'll be stepping off the plane and wandering generally south towards the coast again, uh, to a place where I know it's near the monastery where I've come from before I came here. And there are some places where I think and hope I can stay within walking distance to collect alms in the morning. We are alms mendicants, beggars if you like. We are begging for our food each day. We are also homeless. The uh, term you may have heard Anagarika, which is the first stage when you join a monastery, you go and live there on the eight precepts. Anagarika means exactly that, homeless person or homelessness. Uh, you are living without a fixed abode. Now I think we'd just call these people in England tramps. <laughs> we used to, it's probably not politically correct now, I don't know. Homeless people, tramps, beggars. In India they're holy men, they're sadhus, samanas, uh, and of course most of them, are, a lot of them are. But if you fall out of the system you could really wander around India quite comfortably with not much of a stigma attached to the fact that you're homeless and begging for your food. They're very kind and full of generosity like that here in this country towards these people. And I come under that category very much here. So people who don't know I'm a Buddhist monk or a Theravada Buddhist monk are still happy to look after me, feed me, offer me shelter accommodation if necessary perhaps. Perhaps not that, but at least give me food and a smile because they believe that treating cows and holy men is very important to their karma. This is their Hindu faith. So 
in a way <clears throat> I'm going a long way traveling but I'm probably going to an easier place for me to survive but one must not have expectations and I don't have any I'm going with a very open mind and I'm going there to enjoy the experience as I have the opportunity of being in a different country with a different language different culture everything is very different everywhere in the world to India so it will be refreshing I'm going to be there probably a little bit longer than um, I was on my last visa trips which were to UK and to Nepal um, so I may have a little bit of time to establish myself in a village and uh, be well not only so much looked after the, by the, those people with food but hopefully be able to offer them something not speaking the language it will be just them being able to see a monk not in the monastery not from their country but living as the Buddha taught in their locality to be seen to be witnessed practicing this noble eightfold path so this is the news I will keep you informed along the way there's a couple of days to go yet but I wanted to explain this before it got too late in case I don't get the opportunity to make another video I'll try and include you on not to, to create some kind of <laughs> travel log but to include you with some include some videos highlighting where the Dharma is useful and more poignantly how this Vinaya these bhikkhu rules protect us as monks how they assist us as monks support us and enable us through their very specific nature to live this life as we do as a Tudong monk, a Dutanga monk, a Charaka monk, a forest monk, whatever you call it, a tramp, but with the good-hearted, willing support of the people you meet. This is the life of a Samana, this is the life of a renunciant, a person who has given up the worldly life to wander with faith sadha faith confidence in lay supporters lay devotees of buddhism that will support you as part of the sangha to live that life and put 100 percent of your energy into the practice of sila samadhi and panya so i hope it will be as interesting for you as i'm sure it's going to be as interesting for me and it's not an entirely new experience for me but times have changed I've not been back to Thailand for over three years now I've just spent my third Christmas here in this country in this place um, and in between times I was in Cambodia and I've of course been to Nepal and I've been in UK briefly so returning to Thailand is going to be I'm sure uh, a, 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 an, an enlightening experience because it will have changed like everywhere and I'm looking forward to sharing with you that experience along the way I hope you can be with me to have what to watch this thank you thank you so much for watching and if you've subscribed thank you for subscribing because there are quite a few people providing these valuable comments and questions now and this is what gives me encouragement to keep talking to you like this otherwise I could just carry on wondering <laughs> but I like doing this because the comments I get back and the questions I receive are indicative that you appreciate this content or at least it is useful to some extent so please whatever is useful 
you take it and use it. If it's not useful, ignore it, turn it off. It's up to you. And to that end, I must end this talk and it's time for me to go and get food. I have someone locally staying um, who's been very kind to give Sangadana, provide my lunches for the past couple of days. Um, so I haven't been to Prasad. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet today. Um, but uh, uh, you will no doubt hopefully be able to come along with me on this next stage of the journey to Thailand on Tudong and then returning to India at some point. So apologies for waffling on a bit. I wasn't talking specifically on, on Dharma today, just general matters. So I have a tendency then to waffle because you're not getting any feedback with whom you're talking to in this situation. So uh, many blessings with Metta. May you be happy, may you be well. Namo Buddha and Sukihotu. Sukihotu, Sukihotu.